Good morning students, my name is Shriya Lutra. I am from Grand International School, Sector 31, Guru Gram. I am the Social Studies teacher. I hope you all are in the best of your health, engrossed in the preparation of exams as well. So here I am to teach you in, a, in an innovative way, but not with the books, not with the notes, with just one innovative technique of teaching. So I would like to teach you the topic of money and credit. Before starting the topic, let's understand by what do we mean by money. Money is the fundamental unit through which we exchange, through which we buy the goods and the services. The money is the most important unit. Why? Because it's because of money we buy the goods and services and as well we have various uses of money. Now talking about the uses of money. The first one is that we buy the goods and services. Second is money acts as a store of value. By that I mean that in near future I want to save I want to save the money right now. So I can save the money and I, later I can spend that money in future at any point of time. Money is money can be stored. It's not that you are supposed to utilize the money, all the money right now. You can store the money for your future uses. Now talking about the previous times, there has been the era that uh, the kings like Akbar, Babur, Mayu, when they were there. So at their time, coins such as gold coins, silver coins, bronze coins were used. And by the time, our, the era of 2020 in which we are, or let's say some few years back, Paper notes and currency are being used for to buy the goods and services and for all other functions as well. So, before we proceed further with the money, there were the times when there were neither any, let's say money, neither any paper notes or currency. So, how the people used to deal for exchange of goods and services? So, there was a system which was called as barter system. By barter system, I mean that if we want to buy goods and services, so we make the payment in return for the exchange of goods and services only. Now, considering that I am a farmer and I produce, let's say, wheat. I know this doesn't seem to be 1 kilograms of wheat, but consider it to be 1 kilograms of wheat and I have written a W over here which signifies wheat. And I produce wheat and I need to buy, let's say, 1 kg of rice which I have denoted it by R. So I go to the other farmer who produces rice. Let's say I say to the farmer that I need to buy 1 kilogram of rice. So in return, that farmer says that you need to make me the payment in the form of 1 kilogram of wheat. So that's how the exchange of goods and services were done in the previous time. But there were certain limitations of the barter system as well. What if I want to buy the rice but the person is not accepting the payment in terms of wheat. The person wants let's say 1 kilogram of apple in return. So these were the limitations of barter system. But over the time, paper notes and currency came into our lives and our life became very easy. Now, if you want to go to Domino's or let's say if you want to go to the outlets or let's say restaurants like Burger King. So, you just go, you buy your burger, you make the payment in the paper note and the currency and that's how you buy the goods. Likewise, I will show you an example that if I want to buy a notebook and I make the uh, payment in the form of the a currency that is the paper note so that's how I do uh, buy the goods and the services I go to the shop I'll buy the notebook and I will make the payment in the form of the paper notes or the currency which I am having so students that's how the paper notes and the currency came into our life we made our life very easy but now talking about the institution which takes care of the paper notes and the currency circulation that's our apex institution of the country which is Reserve Bank of India. It keeps a check on the banks as well as it ensures that the currency is being circulated properly in the economy and the currency is within the reach of the common people. I, that's all about the money and credit. I hope you could just understand this beautiful chapter and I wish you all the best for your exams and best of luck students and thank you. And students, there are some times that before the exams we might feel stressed but how will the exam be? 
So always remember that you have worked hard and everything will happen good. Everything will be fine. So please do some stress management techniques and uh, you, you can do some dancing or let's say you can uh, listen to music whenever you feel stressed about the exams. But always have faith on yourself that we have worked hard so the exams will be absolutely good. So all the best to you.